Right, good day, grade 12s, and we are back with our pet 2021. We're looking now at phase two. Let's just get through to that over there. I hope you are on track with phase one. For the instructions for phase two, we need to design, create, and administer a questionnaire and create a suitably uh, designed database. Okay, there's going to be a spreadsheet that goes with that as well. Okay, so let's go down here. See, there you see, they talk about the spreadsheet that needs to be created, right? Um, create a spreadsheet with a meaningful file name, okay? Capture and import any suitable data source from phase one and ensure that only relevant and appropriate data from the questionnaire is captured. Okay. So also um, in our spreadsheet, you know, we have to have some formulas. So they're just giving us a good overview of what we need to have, okay? So I'm just going to scroll down to uh, where we have what we need to hand in. So the hand in for phase two is the original questionnaire you designed. So that's one document on its own. Then a minimum of 25 completed, completely answered questionnaires. So that'll be a second document that has 25 pages, um, you know, of a completed uh, questionnaires. Then the completed spreadsheet, completed database. And then you are going to update your report with graphs added under the findings section. Okay, so that is obviously going to be um, screenshots that you would have taken from the graphs that you created in your Excel spreadsheet. So let's just go and have a look at this. Okay, and you can see there's three documents, right? I've got my questionnaire. So this is more or less what your questionnaire should look like. It's just a very, very basic questionnaire. But you can see simple, effective. Um, it is asking everything it needs to, the person's name, the gender, male and female, um, the age of the person. Remember, the idea of the questionnaire is for you to ask questions that is going to give you data that can be turned into information. So the idea of having these questions would be something like, uh, do you know anyone that attends online classes? So this one said no. So now we can draw info to say, well, okay, and this will be in our spreadsheet, um, to say, well, males, about 25% of the males that I um, gave the questionnaire to indicated that they don't attend online classes. Of those who don't attend online classes, 35% are under the age of 21, and X, you know, X percentage is above the age of 25 or something like that. So that's how we end up drawing that info. So you only need a minimum of five questions. Try to make them yes or no, or you know, questions like that. Questions where um, you are going to be given, well, where people are going to be giving you fixed answers, things that you have put there that they can just select. Please do not ask people for their opinion uh, because we can't put that into something where we can actually draw data from that. Okay, so yeah, just be just be very clear when you do that. So that's our question next. Now, I just want to go back to this. I actually want to go to the rubric um, for phase two. Let's have a look. Uh, right, phase two. So the questionnaire, that's worth eight marks. If you have clear instructions given to the individual, the questions are relevant, questions enabled, processing, you've got at least 25 completed questionnaires. Um, it's created electronically. The appropriate questions are grouped together. You have at least five questions and the formatting is professional. Well, then, my friends, you will be getting your marks. Open our questionnaire. There it is. You know, everything is OK. Um, and you will be getting your eight marks from that. Right. Let's move on to the next. Thing. So the next one we're dealing with is the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet's worth. Let's have a look at this. It's four, eight. Uh, that's 12, 16. Yeah, so it's 16 marks for the spreadsheet. So let's go and have a look at an example because the learner now took the questionnaire and was able to turn that into a spreadsheet. So here we go. Again, typical spreadsheet, just something simple. They did not ask you to have an elaborate spreadsheet, but what does it have? It's got 10 entries, could have been 25. Um, we've got the gender, we've got the age, we've got the name. Do you attend or do online classes have an effect on you? There's the answers. And you can see these are yes or no, yes or no, um, X number of years, yes or no. What that allows us to do is to now, once we've done this, 
we then need to put in a section where we are going to put in a couple of formulas. And the formulas will range according to the level. So here, this learner used a count if and an average, a large, a count if, and another count if formula. So from this, the learner was actually able to determine, well, of the people that completed the questionnaire, four um, were of 18 years old. The average age for people completing the questionnaire was around 17. The oldest person was 18. Number of males that completed the questionnaire was six, and number of females was four. Now, why is this important? Important to do this, first of all, because they've asked you to do that. But secondly, when we go to another tab, and please, it must be on a separate sheet, we're going to go to graphs, and here you can see the learner has taken this info and turned it into two graphs. All that the graphs need to have is it needs to be clear, the answer or what it's trying to convey to you needs to be clearly understood. It's got to have a title, it's got to have a legend, it's got to have everything on board, um, and that is all they require from you. In fact, this particular table is more effective than this one over here, but it's still giving us information. So that is what you need from your spreadsheet. Let's go and check on the rubric. A spreadsheet um, for results. Yes, well-designed layout, well-formatted, okay, consistent formatting, not using different fonts all the time. It's easy to read and interpret. Yes. Is the data suitable? Yes. Um, is the analysis relevant with appropriate data? Yes, it is. Um, spreadsheet processing and analysis of data is suitable to the solution. Yes. Functions applied. Yes, there have been functions that have been applied. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So, with the graphs, one relevant meaningful graph, a second relevant meaningful graph, and the appropriate types of graphs and options used. Yes, we have graph is easy to read and interpret. So, for having two solid, clear, simple graphs, you get your four marks. This is where it becomes tricky. When we look at the spreadsheet complexity, they mentioned that you must have um, at least one meaningful calculation from level one, one from level two, one from level three, one from level four, but you don't need calculation on each one. In order to get the four marks, what you need here is to have one calculation from each of the levels or you can have, here they tell us, meaningful calculations using um, any of the three different levels. Okay, But you can have like one on a level one, two on a level two, one on a level three, you know, things like that. So try and I would say um, look at having one calculation from each of the levels. Here they are. Sum, min, max, count. Those are all level one. Round, large, small, left, right. Those are all level two. Um, mid, count, if. Some if, those are all level three. And then um, if you use a VLOOKUP or a nested if function, that's going to be a level four. And that's all you need to know um, when it comes to spreadsheet. So again, just for doing that with the spreadsheet, having our formulas and our graphs, you'll get, should be able to get the maximum amount of marks there. And then the last one is our database. So database is just for a... 12 also 16 marks no 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 20 marks okay so database counts for 20 it's actually more than excel because what we are essentially doing now is we are taking the spreadsheet and we are turning it into a database okay so if we had 25 questionnaires we should have 25 entries in our spreadsheet which means we should have 25 entries in our table Okay, so here the learner has created a table. They've got exactly the same information from the spreadsheet here. The spreadsheet headings now become the fields over here on top. Okay, and you can mess around with the properties and that. That's all fine. Let's have a look at what they actually want from us. Firstly, they want 20 records plus three relevant, meaningful, and correct queries. Let's go and have a look at the table. Okay, learner doesn't have 20. But the learner does have one, two, three queries. Okay, so the learner has the table plus the queries. That's fine, but it doesn't have that. So you'll miss out on that mark. Um, at least one query, one other relevant query. Okay, so just, just for having the table and the queries, there marks. 
Now, there is going to be a complexity, like we had with Excel, around the queries. Okay, you can see here again, the same is going to apply. If you use the aspects from all four levels, one, two, three, and four, you'll get your four marks. Okay, so have a look at what they are asking you to do when it comes to the complexity of the queries, and then you can pop that in there. Database report. Okay, at least one relevant, meaningful, correct report. So they want a report as well. The report must be sorted according to one field. It must be grouped according to one field. Remember, we can do this in the report wizard. Okay, and then contains at least one meaningful calculation that you'll usually end up putting in the report footer. So let's go and have a look at what the learner's done here. He's got a table, he's got his fields, he's got the info in there. That's fine. We tick off the boxes. Beautiful. Queries, he's got three queries, that's fine. And have a look at this, he's got a calculation in here as well. Okay, so that's going to give him some marks there as well, um, but there's no criteria here. So the criteria could be something like, you know, greater than 10 or uh, a criteria for only the yeses, right? And we can run that query and say, these are the ones that indicated yes. Okay, um, so from that perspective, he's, he's fine. There's just the criteria he doesn't have. He's obviously going to miss out on those marks. And then we have the report. So this report, let's see, it is alphabetical. It's not really sorted or anything like that. It's got the date. There's no calculation in there. So obviously he's going to miss out on a couple of marks there. But you, you get marks, again, like I say, for having a report. Or sorting it according to one field and grouping it according to another. So if you run through the report wizard and you sort it and you group it, already there are three out of the four marks there for you. Okay, and then you just have to go and add a meaningful calculation um, into the footer. So that's all they really want on the report, and the rest is just on the query and the table. Okay, so create twelves. That would then be the end of um, phase two and, and what you need to hand in there. Remember, you're going to have a questionnaire. You're then taking the questionnaire, converting that, using that in order to create a spreadsheet, and then using the spreadsheet in order to create your database. It's got a table, three queries, and one report. That's all you need to know for phase two.